So in this video, I'll be doing an unboxing setup and review of the SafePal X1. I've actually had a SafePal S1 for a couple of years, and it's one of those things that appeared in a few of my videos, but I can never quite find the motivation to actually do a review video on, just because I found it to be so underwhelming. Either way, SafePal sent me out a sample of an X1 to have a look at. They're saying the X1 is open source, and this is a big change for SafePal, whose previous devices were all closed source from top to bottom. Let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, no way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Okay, so this is what comes in the box. Let's open it up and have a look. All right, so this is everything that came in the box. We have three recovery card sheets with some nice helpful warnings on multiple languages on the reverse. We have some instruction sheets, basically with QR codes you can scan. We have some stickers. We have a screen cleaning cloth, a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, and then we have the SafePal X1 itself, just with a USB-C port on the bottom, a numerical keyboard on the front, and a screen on the front. It's a very different form factor to the original SafePal S1, which basically used this little screen here and had this directional pad and had a camera on the back. And it's really actually very similar to a cold card Mark IV in terms of just the layout, um, the size, and so on. So it's a little warning sticker on the front to not accidentally blow it up by charging it with a voltage that is too high. So let's fire it up and have a look. And I will just give it power just there. So let's just press this button over here to turn it on. There you go, safe power. It's nice, so we've actually got multiple languages supported in the main menu. So we'll say OK. It says please follow the link below and follow the guide to activate this device. OK. So if I go there on desktop, it's just telling me this is a mobile only thing. So it's basically telling me just to get the app on my phone or as an APK. So let's jump over to a phone and do that. So we will just install that. Here we go. And open. Uh, yep, so let's get started. Create a security password. So this password is for this app itself, not for this. Start safe our journey. So we'll say I have a hardware wallet. I have an X1. Please connect the X1 hardware wallet to safe wallet via Bluetooth. Okay, so now I'll say okay. Connect your safe pal to activate your device. Okay, waiting for connection. So let's just say start connection. Give it the password I just set before. Allow, there it is, X1C180. There's the pairing request, so pair. Now we'll check these two numbers match, which they do, so I'll say OK, OK. And there we go, connection successful. Congratulations, the device has been activated. Add your wallet. So please create and recover the wallet on the X1. Right, so we create the wallet over here now. Yes, was that okay? Add a wallet to start your journey, yep. So, just out of curiosity, if I say recover, what lengths does it support recovering? 24, 12, and 18, that's great. Well, we're not gonna worry about recovering, I'll just create a new one. I'll just create new, create now, that's fine. It has a documentation there, this is what's a mnemonic. Oh, that's very good. So basically it just gives us a bit of documentation if we want it, but we'll just say create now. Oh, that's nice. So we can actually choose the length of recovery seed we want to create. I'll go with 24 just because the checksum is that much stronger on 24. And let's write this down. Now, these words are not case sensitive, so I'll just write them down all uppercase. So one thing you need to be very aware of actually is just giving them to you uh, in a column here, but if you go down in a column, you're gonna record these in the wrong order. So you gotta be very carefully paying attention to the ordering of the numbers on your recovery sheet. So we'll say, okay. Verify your mnemonic phrase next. Okay, let's see how many words we're gonna do. So we're verifying for word one, yep. Great, so we verified all 24 of the words, not cutting any corners at all, because your seed is your wallet. So we'll keep the seed safe. Set a six to 12 digit pin code. Oh, that's nice, it's actually uh, warning us that pin is no good. Okay, I'll just write that down here. Name your wallet, okay. So let's just, I'm guessing we're gonna do like T9 input or something, so. Yep. Say okay. Confirm test as your wallet name, yep. 
your wallet is ready to use, please add it to the SafePal app. So that's great. So we'll securely store that. And let's go back here and add it to the app. So I'll say, I have created my wallet. There we go. Confirm pairing this wallet. Okay. Enter PIN. Congratulations, you're ready. No, I don't want to join the Discord channel. Okay, so here we go. First things first, let's just send some Bitcoin there. So I'll just say receive, maybe. Ugh, I'm stuck in a menu. Oh, okay. Right, so these are the different address types up here. So there is legacy. Can we change? Oh, wow, okay, this is great. All right, so if I click on legacy there, I can actually choose different address types, including uh, Taproot. So I'll just send native SegWit. It defaults to legacy, but I'll just send some native SegWit funds there and hit receive. And this is quite nice, this menu. So the question is, can I confirm this address over here? By default, it only uses the same address over and over again. It's not great for privacy, but at least we can turn it off. There's nothing on here that offers to show me the address to confirm on here. So let's just see if I go into assets, go into Bitcoin, go into native SegWit. So there we go. We can, con we can confirm the address there. That We do have to use the manual address explorer on here to do that. So I'll just send some funds there. Got some Bitcoin on the way. And look, I'll just send some Ethereum there too. Just like before, we have to go into here to verify the receive address matches what we expect. So the question is, does it show us unconfirmed transactions? Ah, there it is. So that is the unconfirmed Bitcoin transaction on the way in. Can we send funds from it? Can we send unconfirmed? Yep, these are helpful. Oh man, these fee rates are completely insane. Just for context, this is the current fee rate for the uh, Bitcoin mempool, whereas the app is recommending 18 sats per byte as the low fee. Right, so we can't send unconfirmed funds. We'll just give that a little bit of time to confirm and we will go from there. All right, so the Bitcoin has confirmed. So let's just run through the workflow for sending funds. So I'll just grab that, say send, scan the QR code. What that I'm using puts a prefix on there, with which this doesn't like, so I'll get rid of that. And it still has completely bonkers fees. Fortunately, we can customize them, so we will just set that to be three sats per V byte at the moment, because uh, two sats are even clearing the mempool right now. Yes, it is more than recommended. There we go, and I'll just send max, and say next. Now, what's going to happen? Transfer the blockchain require fees. Yep. So send. Waiting confirmation, send those. BTC, send to. And there is the address that I'm sending to. Which matches where I'm expecting it to go. So now I'm gonna enter the pin and say okay. And there we go, transfer completed. So that was quick and painless. All right, so that's the Bitcoin on its way back. And in terms of the Ethereum and stuff, the only other thing I was curious about, we just go through the DeFi button. So for example, if I just go into Uniswap, what can we do in there? So we'll just connect. Uh, I'll just say MetaMask. Is that what this is gonna present itself as? In chain, dismiss. Yes. All right, so I'll just click MetaMask and that's actually connected now to this wallet here. So if I wanna swap that for something like USDC, and just say review, I wanna see what this looks like over here. So if I just say swap, sign the message with this huge chunk of data, which is, almost, which is entirely unintelligible. So we'll say confirm and then what do we get over here? We're just blind signing, dApp, Uniswap, Chain, Ethereum, swap, send to. Oh man, I actually don't want to do that swap. I was just curious to see how blind our transaction signing would actually be. So we'll just say cancel. Okay, let's also have a look and see what else we can do in this app. So there's also like staking stuff. Um, click 
on options, what have we got? So we've got security, so different ways that we can unlock auto signing. Oh, okay, that's only for software wallets, not hardware wallets, because the SafePal app does actually support uh, using that for both. You've got address books, node settings, custom networks, language, colors. And yeah, so we can actually add both hardware and software wallets into the SafePal app, so it is actually very useful. If you do need to do a recovery and lose this device, it's very handy just to be able to use their software wallet and get the same uh, basic interface that you're familiar with, though obviously importing your seed phrase straight into your phone completely compromises. So again, only something you would do in a recovery situation where you cannot wait for a replacement hardware device. So if I click on the swap tab, that was that same screen we're on before. And there's a bridge, which is nice. Actually, we can sort of bridge different coins across different blockchains, which can be extremely useful. Then we've got buy and sell. It will provide through Simplex and Exchange. This just ties into these other exchanges. Now, what about desktop? It also says it supports a wallet extension. So can we connect directly to it with that? So the connection on the desktop app is connecting through our phone to the device, but I can't actually interact directly with the device over Bluetooth. And that's pretty much all there is to it in this app. So if we have a look at the device itself, what else can we do? So basically, Asset is essentially just the um, address explorer for the different chains that it supports. Uh, settings, we've got settings for the device, so we can actually turn on a BIP39 passphrase if you want. Uh, we can do a seed verification. That's nice, so this is a recovery check, so that's excellent. With the timeout for it to fall asleep, the auto off time, 45 seconds, we can change the pin, change the language. Change the brightness. Wow, there's only two, so how high does it go? Right, so it's got three levels. Ooh, that is bright. <laughs> so, uh, multiple address. For well, UXDI based networks, addresses can be switched. Ah, okay, that's fun. So I can actually switch between single and multiple address mode. Okay, that makes more sense now. So we can turn Bluetooth on and off, upgrade firmware, reset the device go back through the downloads things and go into the about page. And that's pretty much it. So pretty straightforward. So it says it's open source. Let's open, let's have a look. Okay, so this is their GitHub and we can see the SafePal app though that was last updated last year. So there's way behind the app on the app store. So it still doesn't look like there's actually enough information in here to be able to decrypt the QR codes used for the data exchange for the SafePal S1, though it looks like most of the wallet app software is there. What about the firmware for the X1? Yeah, that's pretty minimal. It does at least look like it's keeping up with the latest versions. So basically there is good news and there is bad news. So the good news is that SafePal are moving in the right direction and opening more of the source code for how both their app and their hardware works. The challenge is that they still haven't actually, number one, delivered the source code that they said they would. Uh, information that would allow us to decrypt and validate the QR code exchange between the older SafePal S1 wallets has still not been available. So that's again, essentially a, still a fully closed hardware communication and software stack for the SafePal S1, so again, completely, completely closed source, more than just about anything else. When it comes to the SafePal X1, things are unfortunately even worse. Despite marketing it as their first open source hardware device, there is still not enough information on their GitHub page to be able to download the source code to be able to build the firmware and flash and run that on your device, let alone being able to compare the firmware that you built locally to the firmware that's being officially distributed from SafePal. Simply put, it still requires complete trust in the vendor not to be shipping anything malicious into their hardware through the firmware. Fundamentally, the same trust model that you find with things like Ledger, Tangem, Elipal, and so on. And nothing at all like a truly open source device like a Trezor. I actually flagged this issue with them back in April when I got this device and decided I would give them a good six months to see if they would release that source. But it is now the end of October and not only myself, but others have been continuously asking for it on their GitHub and there has been no sign that anything useful is gonna come. And given this, it shouldn't be surprising there are also no no other third-party wallets that you can use with this device. Basically, for the X1, you pretty much have to use the vendor supplied software from SafePal, which again is not great when you are also using that in conjunction with a closed source hardware device as well. All right, summary time. 
So the SafePal X1 itself does seem to be a fairly competent wallet coming in at an affordable and accessible price, which is always really good. Having the ability to be able to use it as basically a mobile first device is always fantastic because a lot of people don't have a PC. In terms of user experience, it was generally very good. The screen was nice and large and bright and clear. The buttons all clicked very nicely and made entering things like text, numbers and things like that quite straightforward and did all the basic things that a crypto wallet needs to do and did them just fine. My main issue with this device Device is the way that I really do believe it has been marketed in a very deceptive way. Though to be fair, these guys are not the only vendor who is screwing around when it comes to pretending to be fully open source when really they are not. Unfortunately, most people don't know the difference, don't care, and clearly these companies know it. I have put it onto my hardware comparison list on my website, and you can see that it, while it does better than things like an EliPal, it still doesn't do anywhere near as well as things like a Trezor or a Ledger or things like that. And while something like the SafePal X1 isn't the type of device someone like me would use, it might be just fine for you. So if you think that a SafePal X1 would help boost security of your setup and help me out in the process, I've got an affiliate link in the description. Other than that, if you have any experiences with the device or any questions about it, just leave a reply in the comments. I do my best to answer all of them. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.